What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Anthony Sane Show here. Of course, I'm your host, Anthony Sane. But, man, Kenny Stubblefield on the other side of the World Wide Web. Kenny, what's going on with you, my brother? Man, dude, it has been a crazy day, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. What's up? It's not what you think. Okay, what's up? <laughs> News broke today, man. Ben Affleck, ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez might be headed for divorce, bro. That's uh, the really? biggest. That's Ain't the biggest. They been down that road before. That's the that's the biggest story on Twitter today, right? They ain't been down that road before. No, I don't even know, man. I'm just messing around. Oh, I, you just I making some up? Oh, okay. I mean, I no, they are. I, th I think they are, but but that's I used to my Tom Brady old punk ass out here, man. <laughs> to, man, get your how you how you hand picked that ain't with the hand no more, man. Get ass out of here, man. Get what are you talking about? <laughs> well, yeah, man. A lot of stuff going on, of course. Big news today on Twitter, man. Um, NBA Central, which is kind of a news uh, aggregator, they kind of move stuff around on on Twitter. They uh, shared information that came out from my man, uh, my man Evan uh, Damarell, uh, who put the tweet out saying that uh, their sources there are saying that teams like the Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, and the Miami Heat are interested in, in acquiring Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, of course, team was recently eliminated by the Boston Celtics, and he said that those teams are uh, are interested in Donovan Mitchell, but don't Rule out certain dark horse teams, Kenny Stubblefield, including the Memphis Grizzlies and the Houston Rockets. Uh, that news came out today. Uh, we're going to have Evan on the show today. Evan is going to come on with us later on in the show. Um, that's going to be good. I had to reach out to him, man. I want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, uh, his, his thoughts on the whole thing, how real he feels like it is, yeah. and uh, what else it could be possibly leading to uh, this information. Uh, also going to have my boy Chip Williams is going to come on today. Chip, of course, is – out of the Bluff City Media NBA draft analyst got to get him on. We go, you're probably gonna see a lot of Chip Williams on the next month or so. All over Bluff City it. Media's network. Yeah. Yep. 100 percent When it comes down to the draft, Chip is just an expert in, in scouting these guys, evaluating prospects. Uh, just great to have him be a part of this uh Bluff City Media team. He's gonna join us for the sit down with Sane. Gonna get Evan a little bit later on in the show. Two big guests today. Like I said, uh, hey, I'm an all-season guy, Kenny. A lot of people don't want to have nothing to do with the all-season when the game's over, but this is what Hey, this is my time of year to talk. Man. I feel like you. I feel like you thrive in this time oh, period. I love man, it. You, I love, I love like it, bro. Roster construction and how things yeah. move and what goes yeah. on, all that kind of I, stuff. I call you all day long, telling you stuff that I'm thinking yeah. about. It. Hey, what if they're doing this? Like that kind of stuff. Well, um, like I said, go ahead. What's interesting about it, even with the Donovan Mitchell stuff, is like mm -hmm. even apart from this news report that came out today, is the is what folks need to understand. What fans need to understand is that. Agents play a role in all of mm -hmm. this stuff with, with the media. So, like, mm -hmm. when you start hearing media reports coming out about mm -hmm. Donovan's upset, Donovan's this, Donovan's that, that is all, like, that is all media guys getting that information yep. from Donovan Mitchell's agents. Yep. And so, when I saw that, I was like, man, they're making a play somewhere. They're trying yep. to pull something. They're trying to do something. So, the fact that Memphis is involved in this, potentially involved in this, is pretty wild to me. Yeah, let's let's look into that for real because it seems like you got a lot of Grizzly fans that are kind of upset about this. Like, why are they trying to get a Donovan Mitchell? Is he really that much better than Desmond Bain? Why would we talk about trading Desmond Bain, a guy whose contract matches up pretty much with Donovan Mitchell? Why would we talk about moving Bain? All these type of things are going out there, right? And I didn't have any of those emotions. I didn't think about it like this way at all. Now, first of all, I'll say this. Let's not act like Desmond – I mean, let's not act like Donovan Mitchell ain't Donovan Mitchell, right? The guy who's <laughs> going off of 40, you know, points and these type of things. That's an act like he's not him. I'm not saying Desmond Bain is not good as hell. I'm not going to say he's not good for us. But let's just let's make that a totally separate conversation. Let's just throw right. it out the window, right? Right. Let's look at let's look at the tweet. And this is Anthony saying, giving you guys uh trade tweet analysis one-on-one. -on -one. How to dissect <laughs> these tweets, right? Because if you dissect read this stuff at first value, you're going to – at face value, you're going to get super excited – and you're gonna miss what the what they're really saying in this tweet. So let's take a look at it, Kenny Stuff. <laughs> like we're trying to, you want to help them not go on this. I'm trying roller, to help the people not go roller on the coaster of emotion, right? Because this, this is, we're this is a new territory for us, man. I'm gonna right. explain why this is a new territory for us. For this, this tweet is not like it's unlike any trade scenario tweet you've ever heard involving the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm about to break it down for you guys now. Um, monumental moment here on, on the Anthony Sane show, man. You're not gonna get this, man. You you your, your nerds up and down the radio dial. From any of your, your favorites on Twitter, podcast, whatever. I'm gonna break it down for you, Kenneth Stubblefield. This not often, you, not often do we not often do you do you flex the tribal tweet, tribal chief 
Mantra, yeah. <laughs> this is Tribal <laughs> Chief Anthony saying. Oh, uh, yeah, we're in Tribal Chief mode right now. This man. is Tribal, Tribal Chief mode right here. Go ahead. Sit down for the people. All right, this tweet is broken down into two tweets, right? Two parts. The first part says that uh, sources confirm the reporting that the Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, and the Miami Heat are interested in acquiring Mitchell if he becomes available. All right. Then there's another part of that tweet that says, but a separate source did share that the Houston Rockets and the Memphis Grizzlies could also be teams worth monitoring in a possible Mitchell sweepstakes. All right. Let me say this. Kenny Stubblefield. There's a drastic difference between the teams mentioned on top and the teams mentioned on bottom. What's what's the difference between the Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, Miami Heat part and the Memphis Grizzlies, Houston Rockets part? You muted. I can't hear you, brother. <laughs> my apologies. In, yeah, yeah. My, in my mind, this is what this is what it, I would almost take Brooklyn out of that and put mm-hmm. it, put them down with the, down with the mm-hmm. Memphis. And no, Houston. Brooklyn is right where they're supposed to be, because you're talking about two teams in Miami and L.A., that don't mm-hmm. have a lot of assets. It's a it's a wish. It's it's a to me to me this is agent saying here is what you're going to have to give up if you're Miami and you're LA. Mm-hmm. This is the compensation that you're gonna you're gonna have to figure out how to match what Memphis, what what Houston have to offer. Will have to offer mm-hmm. exactly. Um, and these teams, the Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, Miami Heat. Those teams aren't contending teams. Like they won't. Right. Um, if LeBron and, and and Anthony Davis are still there, yeah, the Lakers team is probably going to be good with Donovan Mitchell. But there aren't there aren't pieces in LA to get Donovan Mitchell. LA, How do you right? get Donovan Mitchell over there? That's the exactly. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> Miami Heat, y'all don't have the pieces either. Um, Brooklyn Nets, y'all had the pieces. Why are y'all going to be a good team with, Devin, with Donovan Mitchell? No, teams on the bottom: Houston Rockets, Memphis Grizzlies. Content- okay. I got you. You, yeah. you put Donovan Mitchell on those teams, either one of those two teams, they're championship contenders. And not only that, Kenny Stubberfield, those teams on the bottom may be teams that they're, they may be – if, if agents are talking, those may be teams that we're trying to get our client to, Kenny Stubberfield. And that's a monumental moment in Memphis Grizzlies history. When your team was being mentioned in these type of conversations as, hey, if I could get Donovan Mitchell to Memphis, I think my client would be happy. Or I think if, if he goes to Memphis, he can win. A, he can get that cha- elusive championship he's been trying to get his young career. That's an interesting take. I didn't even yeah, thought I think, about I that. I think fans are totally misreading this tweet, man. Like like I said, the fact that this is broken off into two, tw- two different tweets, right? It's like, you know, you got these teams. Oh, man, we want Donovan Mitchell real bad. But you also got, hey, Grizzlies, why aren't y'all getting involved in this conversation? This hey, could be Grizzlies, get involved in this conversation. Yeah, this, this could be that, Cleveland yeah. that, hey, if y'all if y'all want to talk Desmond Bain, let's talk. You know what I mean? Like wow. People, I think I, I think our fans are just really missing what's really not, going on this week. Well, we're not used to that. We're not used yeah, to Yeah, we're that. not used to being a part of those type of conversations. And I think that's exactly what's going on. I'm gonna talk about this with Evan. I'm not gonna get that much into detail. And here's another thing, too, man. People have to remember this is all going on during the NBA draft combine. All the NBA GMs are in the same room. All the NBA agents are in the same room. People are talking. When you start hearing rumblings about Donovan Mitchell, if you're a smart, competent GM, you get involved in those conversations, bro. In any way possible. Whether you have intentions to actually get that player or not. You stick your nose in there and you get inside that group chat, you get inside that group text, you get inside that WhatsApp, you get inside that Discord, and when things get to moving, you can hop in and say, all right, what about Jared Allen, though? You know what I'm saying? What about Evan Mobley, though? You know what I mean? That's when you can hop in those conversations and you can snag a player. That's when you're like, okay, if, if I'm hunting a certain player, if I'm trying to chase Edie, I, oh, I just had this conversation with Cleveland. I know what they're talking about doing. I can jump in on that trade. That's what smart GMs do. It's not even about Donovan Mitchell, but this is a major conversation that's definitely happening during the draft combine. If you're a smart GM, you jump in on these conversations, Kenny Stubblefield, and you throw your name in the hat. That's why I got excited when I saw this too, because I said, man, look at 
look at my GM out here trying to make moves, trying to give us a championship team, man. I loved it. I, I, I'm super excited about it, man. But I tell you what, we're about to go to break, man. Like I said, we got a long show coming today. Two great guests. Chip Williams is going to talk NBA draft with me, man. We're going to break this thing down. We're going to see who's coming to Memphis. We're going to talk about Zach Eady, of course, who's been a riser. I made my breaking news that he's growing on me. No Diddy, no Drizzy, no Giddy on that one. But uh, he is growing on me for sure. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to Chip Williams about that. Also, my man Evan Damarell is going to come in, talk about what we just talked about with this Donovan Mitchell news. Grizz is showing potential interest in that. We'll talk about that and what may be going on behind the scenes on that particular trade. But I'll tell you what, man, like I said, we're going to take a break when we come back. My man Chip Williams is going to be here on the Anthony Sane Show. See you guys in a minute. When I saw that Michael Cole put out a story of Adam Silver continuing his check-ins with Jai, I'm like, what the hell are we we doing? Draymond Green is still kicking dudes in the nards and throwing spinning back fists in the middle of games. And for some reason, Ja Morant still needs a check-in. He's he's yet to hurt anybody. He's taking the right steps. Shut Shut the hell up, dude. Like, what are we doing? It is such posturing. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, and it's gross. It was steep. And he was trying to make an example of him, and we yeah. didn't think he'd be able to stick to that. Lo and behold, by damn, he hasn't. Yeah. Miles Bridges in the league. Draymond had an indefinite suspension away from. I don't even think it was actual suspension. Sorry, you do exactly what button to push because I saw the article come out and I was like, "What a cuck!" It's Adam unbelievable. Adam dude. Silver, the cuck. Come hang out with Daniel Greer and Nathan Qualls on Grizz 901 Live. Every Tuesday night at 901, live on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Uh, I wonder if Luca's going to survive because he is, he he just, uh, he, he fell to the floor the other night when he got up and reminded me of myself getting up off the floor these days. <laughs> I was like, my God, he looks like he's 50 years old trying to get up off the floor. I think Luke is embellishing a little bit because he might be beat up and everything, but I think he's embellishing a little bit to just, he's he's, he's pulling the old bait and switch on people. A little bit. A lot I told my brothers the other day on text, I'm almost getting tired of watching them bitch and moan the whole game. Oh my Jesus God. Christ. It's over. It's literally over everything. And it's not just over, was it a call, not a call? Is it my, my teammate didn't move? Or if I threw a pass, you weren't there? I'm just, the whole, all of the antics are getting old. For somebody who is such a great basketball player, the whining has gotten absolutely out of control. Bro. It's every single every possession. Tune in to the Night Court Podcast with your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brevin Knight on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Uh, My guy Chip Williams is in the building, man. I told you he is the uh, Bluff City Media official Draft analyst, <laughs> draft the, analyst, the official, the well, yeah, the official uh, draft analyst of Bluff City Media. Man, it's this time of year. He don't have much to say outside of this time of year, but he will he will pop out <laughs> on you uh, for this draft stuff. This is the Super Bowl, of course. Chip, me and Chip go back way back. Some OGs in this in this uh, Grizz Twitter world. Uh, Chip is funny, man, because there's this poll going around. I don't even know who this Twitter account is, right? It's like he's got like some type of Grizz Twitter awards or something like that, right? And he's got like the veteran Grizz Twitter like thing, right? And I'm getting smashed. Like I saw the poll, I'm getting smashed, right? So I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I feel like we've aged out, bro. I, I mean, I remember when we, we were the guys in our 20s, early 30s, you know, whatever, doing this. Um, but yeah, we we've aged we're, out, man, for sure. We're washed. I, the yeah, new generations it, here, man. They got me in as, as a legacy vote. I'm getting smashed. I'm, like, I'm I don't even count these guys. I the, 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 their tribal chief don't even count in their eyes. Uh, is a vet anymore, man. So, uh, yeah, they got to yeah. put some respect, man. They, yeah. if, if it wasn't for you, there's there wouldn't be a Grizz Twitter, man. man so, I'm gonna get smacked by Creamy Cole, who I think is like 21. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I was gonna say, I was gonna say it's Creamy Cole season, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, hey, 
I, I'm amazed out, man, for sure. But Chip, hey, like respect said, to those guys. But this is the OG right here. Respect yeah, to him. I, the I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Uh, well, of course, they're here to talk uh, draft stuff. Uh, Kenny is on here with me. Uh, with yeah, you. I need to do something before we get started talking about right. the 24 draft. Um, Go ahead. Something came across my timeline the other day, Chip, that we need to discuss. And that we've put a lot of videos on Bluff City Media's YouTube channel this past year, but there's mm -hmm. only one that has universally been derided by the fans as a terrible take. And I want to play it <laughs> because I think before we get into this discussion today, we might need to make an apology, honestly, oh, with no. the three of us. We might need to make an apology. I'm going to play it real quick. I want to see what your thoughts are. This is from last year. The Hornets would do drafting uh, Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson. Yep. They took Brandon Miller at number two. Is Brandon Miller actually the second best player in this draft, or was that a uh, <laughs> system fit? Or because if that's the case, I've got a problem with what they did. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a fit guy. I'm a best player available guy yeah. for sure. Trades, free agency, that's where you go for your fit, right? Mm -hmm. What they just did with Martin Smart. Right. The right. draft, that's an asset. You're looking to maximize that asset. You're looking to get the best possible player, mm -hmm. right? I was a scoot guy. That dude is a freaking killer. He is wired the way like Kobe. Uh -oh. the best guy. Like, I saw him going against Wimby. Like, I was like, Kobe, oh, dude, shit. ain't dude. scared of none of this shit. Like, yeah. Power guard, get to the rim whenever he wants, and like, just F you finisher. LaMelo Ball is not a guy that I'm going to make like – Franchise altering decisions. No. You know what I mean? Like, no. going to be bad anyway. So yeah, just, exactly. just see who the better player is and, and, and do what you need to do. To me, if LaMelo, like, he doesn't like it, just trade him. You know, yeah. Scoot's better anyways. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Damn. Listen, that one hey, has we, been – you ought to see the comments on that thing, man. It was like, oh, yo, no. shut this channel down. What a, <laughs> what a, what a casual take by a bunch of casuals that yeah. Scoot's – Scoot's better than Brandon Miller. Like, did we know that Brandon Miller was going to be the next coming of Paul George? Like, I what didn't the know. hell, it, it, bro? Neither did we know that Scoot Henderson was going to be out there wearing the Urkel glasses. Who was that? <laughs> neither one of those were on my bingo card at all, man. Look, um, it it was a tough it was a tough rookie season for that take, but uh, we had a long mm -hmm. time uh, for that take to age. So, okay. uh, all all respect to Brandon Miller, he killed it. I still <laughs> had him, I think, fifth in this class. So, I. Mm -hmm. Man, chip out. Hey, the internet just kicked the man out. They just blew <laughs> the man's hey. They just said, get up out of here with the take, man, for sure. <laughs> just told that man to get up out of here with, with, that, uh -oh. with that take, for sure. I think we lost him, man. Nah, I think we lost him, too, man. But like I said, uh, I, it's, I'll say this, too, though, man. You got to go back. I'm not saying we're not wrong. I mean, I mean, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't I mean, whatever, right? But the thing is, with that whole thing, you got to think back to the – the OJ Mayo Kevin Love trade, right? You know what I mean? Where you had two dudes who um yeah, it looked like Kevin Love was was not as good as OJ Mayo after that rookie season, but after a while, you know, Kevin Love became Kevin Love and OJ Mayo right, you know, flanked out. OJ, yeah, got, so got got hit in the face on a on I, a plane I ain't saying we ain't about, wrong. About we, a we were clear. Game. Yeah, we were clearly wrong on that one, but I'm just saying, hey, let that <laughs> thing play out a little bit more. But like man, if I had saw pictures of Scoot Henderson wearing, you know, Buddy Holly glasses, I probably would have changed my, you know, took take a long time. He didn't do that in the G League, in fairness. You know, with the Ignite, he didn't wear those. So I don't yeah. know where those came from. We got to ditch those for year two, though. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely something connected to uh, a guy wearing glasses in Hooping. I, I mean, can't. but but we can talk about Scoot, but I, I, did, I did not expect Brandon Miller to be, to as, be good as good no, I did. No. as he was. Like no, One thing we got to remember, too, is Brandon Miller was not your typical – freshman right i think he's 21 years old so he was a little bit older coming into the league a little he's a couple of years older than scoot is mm -hmm. so he had a little his body was a little bit more ready but right. there's nothing to say other than that guy was awesome and that was a hell of a pick by charlotte because he looks like he's going to be right. perfect with Lamelo as long as Lamelo would stay healthy exactly well chip we talked about brandon miller being a guy that we missed on uh who who is a guy this year that you think people are kind of overthinking like he was a guy who was a good college basketball player uh, good, you know, perimeter guy on the wing. Who's the guy this year who you think that, like, a lot of scouts and maybe a lot of teams may be overthinking? It? I think the guy right now, and it seems like it's starting to correct a little bit, but the guy right mm. now for me is Ron Holland from the G League Ignite. Mm. Um, he yeah. came in as the top guy in this class for the most part, um, goes to the G League Ignite. I think people are getting a little too caught up in what he shot from three this year and mm -hmm. not looking at all the other stuff that he did. Because 
with Ron Holland, he was basically a power forward his entire prep career, going back to Duncanville at Texas, mm-hmm. AAU stuff. He was a power forward. He gets the Ignite. They put him on the wing. And so he's developing as a wing in a professional league against grown men and still puts up nearly 20 points a game while being yeah. one of the best defenders in that league as a teenager. Right. Um, and playing for a team that don't exist anymore. <laughs> exactly. A terrible team that really didn't even have a uh-huh. point guard, you know. Um, shot over 70% from the foul line, so that indicates, like, a solid touch. You know, the shot can maybe get a little bit better. But I think people are starting to trend back towards Holland, like maybe top five in this class. Mm-hmm. He may end up number one overall for me. I'm not quite done – with looking at everybody yet, but uh, for a while there, man, he was falling out of the top 10 in some mocks, and yeah. I just thought that was crazy. Um, if he's on the yeah. board there at nine for the Grizzlies, it's going to be hard for me not to say just write his name on the card and turn it in as fast as you can. I uh, was talking to Paris Sharkey, uh, the beat writer for Bluff City Media, the Grizzlies beat writer, and we talked about um, how every there, there are guys who, regardless of what they shot before they got to the league, they become shooters in the NBA. We just saw uh, 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 Jones, uh, Jones for uh, for Dallas. I can't think of his first name. Uh, Derek, Derek Jones. Jones Jr., right? Derek Jones yep. Jr., like going off the other night from three, just really made himself into a three point shooter. PJ Washington made himself into a three point shooter, uh, since he's been in the league. Gigi Jackson was not a shooter in high school, you know, what I mean, a guy who or college, you know, what I mean, he's became he had very good numbers as a, as a rookie in the NBA, you know, guys like Jimmy Butler, uh, whoever, Kawhi Leonard, you know, just different guys throughout time. Though these guys who have always been great players kind of find a way to transition their games and add the three-point shot when they get to the NBA. And you look at guys like Ron Holland, a guy who's fallen in the draft because people say, oh, he can't shoot. But how many – I mean, time and time again, you find these guys that are just good players who over time develop that jump shot. Is he a, a, I look at guys like him and especially like Stefan Castle, right? Who guys who, who all, you know, top 10 level guys coming out of high school, you know, didn't have the three point shot in college or in the G League or whatever. Do those type of guys just seem to be the type of guys that get the, that late? They pick that up. Those guys find a way to be the best players in the, in the NBA. Why is it that you think teams um, make those type of decisions about those type of guys and allow them to fall in the draft? These guys who they've seen be dominant, you know, forever. Man, it's a great question, uh, and I don't have a great answer for you. I think the Grizzlies have honestly benefited from some of that with mm-hmm. just guys that are an outlier in some way. Like take Desmond Bain, for example. Mm-hmm. He had a negative wingspan, and he was old coming into the draft. So that's two mm-hmm. knocks on him, right? But everything else at TCU said Desmond Bain is going to be able to play in the NBA and be good. I don't know that anybody thought he'd be quite this good, but I think everyone knew this guy had a real chance to be a solid rotation guy in the league. Well, because he had the negative wingspan and because he was older, all of a sudden he's there at 30. Mm -hmm. Um, Same thing with like a Xavier Tillman. Like they were able to snag him in the second round because he's shorter. Brandon Clark, exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's not even just shooting. I feel like sometimes we hyper-focus on what a guy can't do or what is negative about him. And we don't look at like, all right, what can he do? How can Mm -hmm. he stay in the NBA? How can he carve out a role for himself? Um, And so – Maybe the league's getting better, you know, because a team like Memphis continues to draft so well and find mm-hmm. these guys later in the draft, and maybe the league will catch on. But if not, I think we have to feel pretty confident that the Grizzlies are going to continue to take advantage of that. You know, Vince Williams was kind of the same way, played in a smaller smaller league at VCU. He was a little bit older when he was coming out. Um, not the prototypical wing height that you're looking for. But right. he gets his chance out there, and it looks like Vince Williams that played at VCU. It looked like a great player, the guy that can mm-hmm. defend, get his shot, and shoot threes. Like, I just think teams overthink it. I really do. Like, it, yeah. you break this stuff down so much that you end up overthinking it, you know? Um, you look at a guy like uh, Stefan Castle, who I mentioned as well. Uh, I think the kiss of death, the kiss of death comparison used to be uh, uh, the Randy Foy type guys, or the or who or guys who got the Dwayne Wade comps, right? It seems like every guy was getting the Dwayne Wade comps coming out of college, right? You remember that? That was like this run where every year somebody was getting the Dwayne Wade comps, and it was Randy Foy, it was um, 
just different dudes every year. Got got the Dwayne Wade comp, right? And it seems like ever since then, the new one has, has become the kiss of death. It's Jimmy Butler comp, right? Everybody's everybody's Jimmy Butler, right? So the latest one, of course, is um, Stephon Castle, right? And my question to you is, do you see Stephon Castle being a guy who's more closer to a Jimmy Butler, or is he more like, uh, let me think of my kid, the kid who came from Memphis, uh, uh, Jerry Culver. Is he more like is he more like Jimmy Butler? Is he more like Jerry Culver? Another guy who got Jimmy Butler comp. So what do you think Stephon Castle's uh floor and ceiling could be in, in the NBA? Yeah, you know, Jimmy Butler is obviously like uh, the highest of high end comps mm-hmm. for Stephon Castle. You know, you, you do hear that one. Um I think everybody got scared when he measured in at six two and a quarter. Right. And we're like, wait, we thought this guy was, you know, yeah. six six when he put shoes he on. He instantly became it. Marcus Smart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the comp instantly went to Marcus Smart out of it in exactly. a day. <laughs> and so we found out, you know, it was an error, he, and he is yeah. six five and a half with, without. And shoes always on, back so. being Jimmy Butler again. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden he's Jimmy again. So, um, like I think Castle specifically, what separates him from a guy like Jared Culver is I think Stefan Castle is a really high thinker and high processor of the game of basketball Mm -hmm. like he Mm -hmm. just he's so smart moving the ball um i think he took a reduced role this year at uconn uh to help them win and i think Mm -hmm. he said that multiple times and i I think it's fair to be wary of a guy who says hey you know my college didn't let me show everything that i can do but i think castle has a legitimate argument there where he he's probably more comfortable with the ball in his hands where he can create I think he's super strong. I think he can get to the rim when he wants to. And the defense is incredible. I mean, he's, like I said, strong as an ox, really high-level thinker. Um, I think on ball, off ball, he's going to be able to play really well. Like, a comp that I saw thrown out that I think makes a ton of sense is, like, could he be a Josh Hart type guy? Mm, Um, Just this tough, rebounder, defensive-minded guy who the shot develops as his career goes on. So – I buy it. I buy Stefan Castle. I'm going to be really high on him. He's going to definitely be in the conversation for a top five guy for me. I think you picked the. I think you picked the next prototype that's going to get bad comps. Everybody's Josh going Hart. to be Josh Hart. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's going to be Josh Hart coming out of coming out of college now, man. For sure. Um, another guy that uh, guys are kind of overthinking, uh, in my opinion, is a guy Dalton Connect, a big time scorer, um, shooting guard, small forward prospect out of Tennessee. A lot of people are saying, like, maybe he's just a product of Tennessee's system where they kind of funneled everything, you know, to kind of go through him, even though he's a perimeter player. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, they're wondering if he can play a role and they're wondering if he's athletic enough. He had he tested out very well in the, in the combine or whatever. So what do you think his uh, prospect would, could be, especially when you're looking through the uh, lens of Zach Kleiman and company with the Memphis group? Yeah, I mean I- – it's uh it's cliche and I hate to fit into the cliche, but like he's more athletic than you think. Like you look at yeah. the combine numbers, like he had a 39 inch vertical, he's a six nine wingspan, a mm-hmm. legitimate six six. Like he is what you want in terms of a guard. And then he's older and he's about twenty three years old. So that's mm-hmm. always a, a concern. You know, older guys tend to play better in college and it tends to limit their ceiling on what they can do in the NBA. But he played in one of the toughest basketball conferences, you know. A decade ago, the SEC was an afterthought outside of Kentucky for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the occasional team that pop up here and there, but there's so much money in that conference now. They've heavily invested in not only the coaches, but the NIL, and Mm -hmm. there's tons of NBA prospects there. And he was the best player in the SEC um, this year, was incredibly high usage guy. And I just think, like, again, another cliche that I'm going to throw out there for Connect is, He's, he's ready, you know, like he I yep. think he can step on an NBA floor tomorrow and give you 15 to 20 minutes per game and you'll feel good about it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know that he's going to be a great defender, but if he can just be, you know, a passable above average, a guy that's not just getting, you know, hunted every single switch in the playoffs, then I think you've got a legitimately good NBA player because the shot's real. He can create for himself a little bit, but The off-ball stuff is where he's going to make his money, I think. Running off screens, you know, spotting up, spacing the floor. And, um, I mean, I think he's a high – again, another one of these high-field players that the Grizzlies tend to fall in love with. So, um, I don't know those saying. Like, I'm 
you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Tennessee football fan. So I follow a lot of Tennessee football accounts and, uh, I don't know if I'm quite ready for my my Twitter to intersect Grizzlies Twitter and mm-hmm. Vols Twitter. I, I maybe want to just keep those separate. Oh, so, man. Well, yeah, I don't know if I need the crazy fan base of both sides. You know, Vols fans will be wondering why the Grizzlies aren't building around Dalton Connect and uh, all the all the Vols haters and Grizz Twitter will be like, hey, don't play this guy. So I don't know if I need that in my life. Yeah, man. I, I, I um, A lot of people are – kind of clamoring for him, saying that he's there at nine, grab him. I'm kind of there. All the guys we've talked about so far, whether you're talking about Ron Holland and Stephon Castle or uh, Dalton Connect, those are my three guys if I'm at nine. Those are the guys that I'm running to the podium to get. But old Chip Williams, there's another guy that we got to talk about. Okay. <laughs> if you'd asked me this question 48 hours ago, I would have been like, get the hell out of my face. My good friend uh, Leon Taylor uh, put a put an immediate tweet after we got the ninth pick of the draft and said, if I'm the Grizzlies, I'm taking – uh, Zach Eady at nine, right? I said, hey, man, stick to stick to Tiger basketball, man. He's a Tiger basketball <laughs> reporter. I told him, hey, man, stick to Tiger basketball. There's no way you take this dude at nine, right? With every hour that passes, I'm looking harder and harder at Zach Eady, man. I, I fell down a rabbit hole on YouTube. I'm looking at the interviews. I'm looking at documentaries. I'm looking at <laughs> highlights. I'm looking at all this stuff, right? I'm, I'm looking at the Trey Draper uh, uh, relationship they he, he played for him when he was at uh, IMG Academy and Yep. All these type of things, but I'm like, crap, man. Like this dude. Then I'm like, okay, there's another huge, another huge man in this in the middle. Memphis has loved every single one of them that's come through here, whether it's Marcus Hall, whether it's Jonas Valentunas, whether it's uh Steven Adams. We've loved every every huge guy that's came through here at the center position, right? So I'm like, all right, bro. Like this, it feels like this is it's got momentum to him. And then my guy Drew Hill, he's in Chicago, right? He's he's down there at the combine. And he he's down there asking the man questions, like, you know, have you have you talked to Memphis? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, Memphis is Memphis has shown some interest in me, man. I like Memphis. I'm like, damn it, man, damn it, bro. Like, I just <laughs> I can't shake this this seven foot five monster of a man, right? Tell me, Chip Williams, am I okay? Are you okay with me coming turning around and saying, hey, I would not be I'm gonna not be messed up about having Zach Eady on this team? Or are you here to talk me off the ledge? No, I look, so it's funny. I, I was texting a buddy of mine, uh, I don't know, maybe a week and a half ago. And I, I started to do the same thing you did, right? I started to watch a little bit more. I started to look at the numbers. And everything about Zach Eady screams outlier. Like, there's mm-hmm. something a little bit different about him. I mean, mm-hmm. people just aren't this dominant in college basketball the way this guy was. Yeah. And so I've texted my buddy and I said, man, I've got some bad news. Like, I think I'm going to have to put out a tweet telling everybody that I'm kind of in on that now. Because, <laughs> all right, I think once you get past, he's, he's not going to be a superstar, right? Like, we're not looking yeah. at, like, Yao Ming or something, the, yeah. the reincarnation of him, right? But if, if all he does is he's a screener, which I think he's one of the best screeners to come in the draft in several years, rebounding mm-hmm. – an elite rebounder just based off the size um and then his conditioning like he has outlier elite conditioning he was playing well over 30 minutes every Mm -hmm. single night for purdue and he's touching the ball almost every possession yeah so he's able to stay on the floor that's not a problem that's a legitimate question with donovan Klingon, but it's not Mm -hmm. so if all if that's your three things he's got right there that's an nba player that's a rotation big man when he's 7'4 without shoes on with a 7 foot 11 wingspan. I mean, the guy can almost just grab the rim standing, you know, barefoot. Um, and then you throw in, all right, he's he can already score over everybody who's smaller than him. We watched him do it, you know, for four, however many years at Purdue. Um, and I think he can improve his footwork and his counter moves a lot in the post. Then mm-hmm. I, I start to buy it more and more. I think the key for him is going to be the passing because – that we're not just going to throw the guy on the low block and get him 15 post-ups. Every no, game. it ain't happening. It's just, it ain't happening, no. right? No. So he's going to have to pass the ball when he's a screener on the short roll, stuff like that. But, you know, the defense, obviously, he's not going to be a switch guy. He's going to be a drop guy. I think you're still going to have a hard time hunting him just because of the size, and they, they're going to keep him close to the basket. Is he going to get played off the floor some? I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that'll happen. But. Yeah. I dare you to try to switch a smaller defender on Zach Eady 
and watch what happens. It's going to be an automatic two points every time. He's going to he's going to want the ball and he's going to make you pay. So that's his, exactly. his natural instinct is to pound dudes. Oh, whoa, pause. No Diddy, no Grizzly, no Jizzy, <laughs> no Drizzy. But, uh, but I, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Yeah, his, his natural instinct is to pound the ball. Oh, well, it's to score in the paint. So yeah, that's that's his natural instinct. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, exactly. Yeah, another thing, another thing, Chip. He can close if if he's if he's holding his own on the defensive end, right? He can close games because he's like a seventy something percent free throw shooter. Exactly, exactly. Dang. The touch is real. He's got real touch, man. All right, so, Chip. With your, all right, Chip. With your tough ass. Let me say that. Let me see. Let's see how tough you are on this easy thing. Those three guys we just talked about: Ron Holland, Dalton Connect, uh, Stephon Castle. One of those dudes are going to be there at night. Yeah. Will you look those one of those three guys in the eye and say, "No, I'm not picking you. I'm about to draft Zach Eden." Did not. I'm not. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I can't do it. That's, the, that's just, what I'm at too, man. I'm taking the swing on the wing, man. Like uh, we can go back and say that the Zaire pick was terrible, but mm-hmm. they basically made the same pick at a much, you know, much lower risk at 45 with Gigi Jackson. What they did is they drafted a guy who's taller than six eight, who is very well coordinated and who shows good touch on his shot. It didn't work with Zaire, but I think you just keep taking as many swings like that as you can. Because if a couple, two, three of them pay off, then you may have two or three Gigi Jacksons running around right. this team with, you know, Ja, Bain, Jaron. So that's where I am. I just think you can find a similar player to Zach Eady either later in the draft or for not much, you know, as, in terms of cost in free agency or in a trade. Well, I'm a, I beg to differ because Zaire, okay. Zaire Williams has never been cold. He's never been the best dude on his team. Gigi Jackson has at least been like a big dog alpha high school scorer. Zaire, I was, Zaire was a project in high school. <laughs> you know I mean? No, so, no, I, I got you. But you yeah. know what I mean. I just mean like guys yeah. who are that mm-hmm. tall, that coordinated, and can get their own shot. That's basically what they did, you know, and it didn't yeah. work. There's no question it didn't work with Zaire. But I don't hate the, the thought process behind the pick. Mm. All right, we talked about the four guys that teams may be overthinking about, um, guys who may be available uh, and probably will be available around pick nine. Uh, who are some guys that teams are underthinking about, guys that might be a little bit too overhyped that are probably going to go in that top five, top six, somewhere before the Grizzlies uh, go in the draft? Yeah, I, I, one guy that comes to mind immediately, and it, it's not his fault. He shouldn't be as high as he is, is uh, Zachary Risache from France. Mm-hmm. Um, like – I think a lot of people look to the ESPN mock to get a good sense of what teams are thinking and what's going to happen in the NBA draft, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think that's fair. I think, you know, when you think sports coverage, you think ESPN. And for so long, ESPN has had Reese Lachey as their number one pick. And they've switched it recently. It's now uh, Alex Sar. But to me, Reese Lachey is a 3 and D prospect with very little handle and creation upside. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't touch that guy anywhere near the first pick. I'd let, I mean, if, if the Grizzlies take him at nine, that's fair value. But the fact that this guy was getting number one or number two talk, I, I just never got it. Um, I think you can find some pretty smart talent evaluators who don't even have him as a lottery guy. Um, I think he's just, it's a little too high for me. And again, it's no knock on him. He hasn't done anything wrong. I just don't think he has the game that should be talked about in, in the conversation for the number one pick. Mm. Well, Chip, I got two more questions for you. Number one, um, people are saying that this is a weak draft, right? Yeah. And my logic is, okay, if this draft is as weak as y'all are saying it is, that means this draft is going to die around pick 15, right? That's what you're saying. This this draft is that bad. It's going to absolutely die around pick 15. Um, how hard or how easy would it be for the Grizzlies to get back into the first round to maybe get a guy like Zach Eady? outside of the top or maybe outside of the lottery outside of the top 12 i don't think he falls too far outside of the top 12 13 because i think he's a rising guy from the combine so how hard would it be for the grizzlies to either you know trade a you know trade somebody with some uh, appeal to another team to move up or what do you have to how hard or how easy do you think it could be for the Grizzlies to get back in in range to chase someone like zach Eady if they didn't want to draft him at nine yeah it's a good question um I mean, I, I would think that teams would value future picks, like a 24 pick, maybe more than they would, you know, something in the in the teens or in the early 20s this year. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about this draft, people call it a weak draft, and I think what they mean is there's no 
There's no Wimby. There's no Zion. There's no yeah. Kate. There's no like, even like last year, you had like, even if you didn't get the number one pick, you had your pick of Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, Thompson Twins, Jairus Walt, like guys that people thought these may be NBA all stars. I don't even think there's one guy who's a guaranteed NBA all star. There's an all star or multiple all stars will come out of this draft, but they're just harder to find. They're not as yeah. obvious as they are in previous drafts. Yeah. So, to me, I actually think some of the value is there in the 20s and even into the 30s because I start to look at some of these wings that are available too. Mm-hmm. Like we already know that Kleiman, th- that's his thing, right? If he likes somebody, he's going to go get him. I believe he went and got Brandon Clark, did the same thing with Santi Aldama and Desmond Bain. I think he maybe even traded up for Xavier Tillman. Like this is what he does. When it starts to get into the 20s and 30s, and there's a guy slipping he likes, he's going to go get him. And I think to your point, it's not going to be quite as expensive as it would be if this were considered a very strong and deep draft. Yeah. Uh, There's been some talk about the Grizzlies possibly trading their pick um, to for a veteran player. Is is where where are you at as far as that's concerned? Are you a guy? I'm a guy who I value rookie deals. I value high production, low, low pay low risk contracts that these rookie deals are right you get a guy for what four years right especially if you old if you're, if you're getting older guys like uh, uh Dalton connect like a Zach Eady, right I value the draft when it comes down to that are you are you the type of guy who kind of frowns up when you hear a trade out of the draft or are you a guy who says hey do what you need to do as far as uh getting a veteran player to win now yeah, uh, another good question I mean I, I think it's uh I'm kind of of two minds one I think you're right I think that when you start to get really expensive as a team, as the Grizzlies are, Mm -hmm. and you start to creep up on those cap thresholds and and Mm -hmm. how punitive those, you know, the first apron and the second apron are in terms of, you know, narrowing the scope of how you can build a team and Mm -hmm. the, the the bill that Robert Pear is going to have to pay to the rest Mm -hmm. of the teams. um, You know, you have to think about that. You have to think about getting productive guys on cheap contracts. So, like what they did with Gigi and Vince is is immense. I mean, I tweeted it at the time of Gigi's contract that at least for this current group, the way it's constructed, you may look at the title window as the Vince and the Gigi contracts because at some right. point, if they're as good as we think, you got to pay them, right? And that at some point, people are going to have to go because it just gets too expensive. But yeah. at the same time, if you can go out and there's a player out there that – you don't have to, you know, significantly overpay for it, that values the ninth pick, and you get a guy that you feel like can either be a playoff starter for you or at least a heavy minute rotation guy. Mm-hmm. I think that makes a ton of sense because you have to go try to win, right? I mean, that we can't keep kicking the can down the road of oh, these guys are young, these guys are young. They're starting to no, hit, they're, they're in their mid 20s, you know. It's yep. it's this is when guys start to make finals appearances and stuff. So I get it. I, I really do. If there's someone out there that makes sense, I say do it. And last thing I'd say on that is just my personal opinion. I don't know that it's worth completely emptying the asset clip to go get the center that everyone thinks that we need. I think that centers can be had at a decently inexpensive price, right? Like I don't think you need to go find mm-hmm. the next go bear and give up you know, a first round pick that you just drafted and whatever they did, four other first round picks plus veterans, right? Yeah. I just, I don't think there's a center out there that could do that. But, you know, depending on what's out there, if it's a great wing, if it's somebody that's kind of unique, a three, four that you feel good playing next to Jaron, put him at the five, then man, I say go for it. Um, so I, I really think it, it comes down to what options are available and what makes most sense to the front office at the time. So that's yeah. probably a cop-out answer, but that's that's just kind of where I am. Because my thinking is, man, I just I just value young, good players who can you, you can kind of fast track. Like Desmond Bain was a was playing in the playoffs this rookie year, right? Like right. for the group, playing for the playoffs, right? Because he was an older guy. Brandon Clark played in the in the play in tournament. You know, that they that would have been a playoff team if it wasn't for the pandemic, right? J- John Morant young, good player that was ready for the playoffs. I think you can draft guys that are playoff ready. If they're old enough and if they're good enough, you get you can get guys that are playoff ready, right? So my thinking is, my logic is, if connects there at nine, you take him at nine. I don't even know you can do this. If you can't do this, tell me. I'm I'm using, if, if, I, if I got 
Dalton Connect on my team. I'm taking, I'm using Luke Kennard to get back into the draft. Like that's that's a million percent, and I'm and I'm chasing Edie, like for real. That's what I'm doing. That makes sense. No, at a hundred percent makes sense. You know, um, can you do I'm that with, with his contract though? Because he's is he technically a free agent now? So it's a team option. So all they'd have to do is say, you know, uh, we're we're up, we're picking up Luke Kennard's option, in. and you can yeah. trade him. Yeah, that's all you have to do. So hey, yeah, bro, I, just, I, just, I just saw the summer for y'all. Just in. give me Dalton, give me connected <laughs> nine. Go chase my man Edie with with uh with uh Luke Kennard's ass and go get back into the draft. Who don't who don't want a high level shooter, man? Let's run it, man. Let's you want you want a high level shooter? Or you want the the fourteenth pick? I mean, drop it off, man. Right. Let's run it. I mean, honestly, yeah. the ninth pick and whatever we'll say the twentieth pick is probably cheaper salary than just one Luke Kennard, right? So, it, would you rather have yeah. Connect and Edie or one Luke Kennard? And you got yeah. team control on those guys for four years. Let's get it, man. Well, Chip, I'm down for it for sure. Chip, I appreciate you every time you're coming on. Just know you're probably coming on again, but 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 before now in the draft, and you're definitely coming on immediately after the draft. So, yeah, just you, get ready, man. You just text me. I'm I'm, I'm always here, man. I, I clear my right. schedule for you. You're the man. Hey, there it is, man. There it is, my guy, Chip Williams in the building. Chip, well, we appreciate you, man. We about to go to break. When we come back, the three pointer here on the Anthony Sane Show. See you guys in a minute. We've been applauding this. I'm going to continue to applaud what Ryan Silverfield and the staff are doing in the transfer portal. Uh, they added a huge addition in former Tennessee linebacker Elijah Herring. Uh, when you pair him with Chandler Martin, like you look at this linebacking core, those two guys and Elijah Herring and Chandler Martin, I think you have two guys that are not even really arguably in the top five for best defensive players in the conference. It just in your linebacking core. You have uh, the best so, linebacking core in the in the conference yeah. by a pretty landslide amount. You yeah, know, like or well, none. So this influx of money, the the positive momentum under this program with Ryan, this is working in the correct direction. They, they don't put together a recruiting class like this or a transfer portal class like this any other year, and they're they're continuing to make these additions in real time. And I think they're top fifty or top forty five right now. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Well, I pretty much thought of him as a second rounder, an undrafted guy to begin with, being listed at 6'6 and then getting measured at six foot three and a half. That's not going to help you at all. It doesn't change my NBA prospect, you know, view on him too much because uh, I already had. I don't want to say a low opinion on him, but a skeptical one for sure. Because David Jones can score with anybody. But what about the ball handling? What about the defensive IQ? Someone could definitely fall in love with him. Especially he could he could easily find him, himself into a, like a guaranteed two-way deal because of his ability to score. Just come in and kind of be a lightning in a bottle type of situation. Uh, but that, that six three and a half is something I talked about last week. I didn't think he was actually going to come back and measure at 6'6", six, six by any means. And uh, I think it hurts him. He does have a plus wingspan, though. I guess that's a good. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Shout out to my boy Chip Williams, man, of course, uh, whose guy was going to do all the dirty work, man, as far as the NBA draft is concerned. Shout out to him getting your boy Rick Rushashore, Rushashore South, uh, last name. Rushashore, Rushashore, Rushashore. Yeah, man, how you say it? Getting it right on the, I don't know, man. But it's it's a lot of dudes that, that are screaming, you might just be a bum in the league when it comes down yeah. to it, man. That man looks like he might be a bum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real. He looks like he's destined on a collision course with, with the uh, Washington Wizards as well, man. So, Did he give I, you any more excitement about no. Zach Eady at all? Oh, Eady, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, because I know Chip was a guy who was totally out of him, just like me. But Chip was one of the guys I, I listen to. Like, I, I get my opinion yeah. from listening to guys like Chip. So and when I see him coming around on it, too, I'm like, yeah, man, I think I'm – because I would love to see the Grizzlies come away with another guy at nine and Zach Eady. And you could use that, too. 
especially if you can use it to release some some cap situations. So absolutely, yeah, I would definitely be down for that for sure. But it's time for the three pointer where we talk about three things that are going on in the world of sports. Very funny story on uh, NBA on TNT last night. Draymond Green just coming in, hating man, hating on the Damn. New York Knicks. And uh, but the the one that's the main one is his comments on Rudy Gobert. And um, I'll just say this, man. I put this on Twitter as well. I think that Nikola Jokic is a generational player. I think he's an all-time <laughs> player. I think he's one of the best centers who's ever seen play the game. And I think that he is transitional, man. What I mean by that, you can drop him in any era and he's still going to be Nikola Jokic. He's going to be cold as shit. No matter what big man you're talking about in history, they ain't never seen no dude doing all this stuff. Akeem Olajuwon, sure. Cold as hell. And just like Akeem was baking everybody, Jokic would bake everybody who guarded him. No matter who you put on Akeem, Akeem was baking them. Shaquille O'Neal, get your ass up out of here. Look, Akeem Olajuwon was dusting your ass back in the day, right? Absolutely. And, and Nikola Jokic can also dribble the ball and also take uh, take it from, from three. He can score anywhere on the court. Now, he's probably the most aesthetically unappealing big man that is that good ever. Like, his game is, is not – just he doesn't look the part, man. He's a big, doughy – overweight white dude who's murdering everybody. And that's that's the reason why people are so critical of him. He is a very good player, man. He is an all-timer. I used to be the guy that would question, all right, man, are we really about to get this dude three MVPs? Is he really about to get three in a row? And, and freak, has Michael Jordan never even won three in a row? Has LeBron ever I, I used to be that guy, right? This dude is cold as hell, bro. Yes, I don't care is. who. And, and and that's another thing, too. And it's really stupid. It's kind of – it kind of disrespects the game and some of the – the like the dopeness of the awards these guys got and have and how good they are just because somebody's defensive player of the year doesn't mean he's equipped to guard one of the best big men of all time man because right. those these postseason awards are basically saying you're the reason why your team that has this extremely good defense is as good as it is jaron jackson jr is the reason why the grizzlies defense is so good plus he was putting up astronomical block numbers right that doesn't mean that Jaron Jackson Jr. can go out there and guard Nikola Jokic. That's not that's not even how the, the award is even set up. You know what I mean? Like, and if you're a weak side defender and you're getting and you're getting weak side blocks, that doesn't mean that you can guard anybody in the league. Like that, right. I, I just hate when people say that. You know what I mean? Um, I think Rudy Gobert is a heck of a heck of a defensive player. He's getting his ass baked by one of the best players of all time. I I'm that whole thing needs to end. Draymond, of course, there's some hating in it. Some of the stuff Draymond says is kind of solid, even in his hating or whatever. But you getting no nah, man, like stop, like and that, and those, that whole those whole narratives that talk bad about defenders who are, who can't stop Jokic, they're shitting on Jokic in the process, and that's the problem I have with all that, man. So yeah, I'm I'm out on all that. I'm out on all the uh, the hating these guys got got Draymond. Uh, Draymond, his Jokic. hate his hating ability is pretty wild. Like he yeah. he hates for. He hates on a lot of players. Yeah. He is perfectly tailor made for that NBA on TNT show because he needs to go ahead and retire and become one of those old <laughs> haters. Old if if haters. that show still exists, people saying that, that show might not exist because NBA is switching to NBC or whatever. Well, I mean, there's, I think there's rumor. I think I don't think NBC. I don't think TNT is going to match what NBC is going to try to do. Do you think? I mean, are could you cool show, with that? Could, are you cool with that show going away? I don't really care one way or another, man. Just yeah, be honest with you. But I think I think that show could probably exist on its own, even if no games are coming on. Like, right. you, yeah, <clears throat> I'd watch it. I'd yeah. watch it. Yeah, people would still watch that for sure. But uh, number two, man, EA Sports dropped an update today on uh, NCAA Twenty Five is coming out. The release date, Kenny Stubblefield. I didn't know this, man, because I knew the game was coming, but I ain't know they was gonna drop that joint now. That game is coming out on July the nineteenth. It's in a, it's in a couple months. <laughs> are you serious? And, and uh, my man uh, Travis Hunter is on the cover of it, so you know I'm getting it. So you it's know Travis Hunter it. and two other dudes. I'm gonna tell you the, the the beauty of video games, right? I I don't I'm not a college football guy, but I'm going to buy this game because one of my better gaming experiences was with the old NCAA football games and the the building your own team, the recruiting and upgrading your stadiums. And I had Memphis cold as shit on the game, right? Yeah. I, like I remember just drafting. I had this guy that was a, a, my quarterback who was um, a, like a 80-something overall athlete coming out of college. And I had him at – I lined him up at corner. I lined him up at receiver. I lined him up at quarterback. And I, he was like, you know, Heisman Trophy winner, all those type of things. I just remember how fun those games were. 
and something about playing those video games, it makes you know who the guys are in college football because you right. know you're playing them on the game. Uh, just like my kid played FIFA, he knows everybody is a soccer player. I know soccer players off of playing FIFA, and I think that this particular game will uh, familiarize those like me who are novices in college football. Uh, but yeah, just know uh, I'll be going back and forth between playing with Colorado, playing with Memphis because I, I got to play with Shadow Sanders, I got to play, play with Travis Hunter, I got to make my own. Deion Sanders on the sideline. I got to do it, man. I got to do it. I got to handle with the gold shades on. I got to do it, bro. I got to have Coach Prime on the sideline. I agree. I, I, I'm i surprised it's coming out this quick, but yeah, it's going to drop like in, in, in a few, in a couple months. It's going to be crazy to see what level of detail comes out with it. What yep. what you're allowed to do. I think we've had discussions. Will, will you have it, all right? the, the helmets, all the jerseys right. at your disposal for like you, you of them or whatever? So, yeah. My question is I think the University of Memphis is due for a, a, a a jersey upgrade, if you will. And I'm wondering, hmm. are they going to wait until this game drops to reveal the jerseys and then reveal their jerseys using the game? I don't know. I, hmm. I, I think it'll be interesting because they're due for a jersey drop. They're due for a jersey upgrade. And so I'm wondering what it's going to look like, what jerseys they're going to have. We've actually had – there's there's a couple of followers on, follows on Twitter that you can go back and you can look and they have this – they actually – track what jerseys are used by the tigers and um i'm interested to see which ones they're going to use man I, I really hope they if, you, if you're a tiger football fan go back and look at the uh cotton bowl 2019 jersey that's the one i want is the away jersey on this on this game yeah i'm gonna go ahead and check that out man for sure but yeah i'm super excited about that game i'm gonna be playing i will not buy the luxury addiction or whatever i'm buying the regular ass broke dude version i never understood the point of buying these uh special editions of these games um do you do you game you game you you don't i used to but man i i am not a gamer like i know a lot of people are i, yeah. I don't game like that now i own the playstation 5 gabe's got a playstation 5 in my house and in his mom's house right and i don't man. hardly play it. i don't hardly play it at all but the thing is it's it's weird now because man i remember standing in line at uh, uh gamestop or Whatever, whatever the name of the game story is, right? I remember doing the midnight release, yeah, picking up the game and who was on the cover mattered because you wanted the, you wanted that cover. It's got a certain guy on there, or whatever. Especially when they had an option. One year it was like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Jordan, and you could pick which player cover you wanted, right? When you went into the store, they had all three versions. You pick which one you wanted. Like I remember that too. And it's like now everything is digital. Like you, like you can still go buy the hard copy game, but it's like, or I can just sit at home, pre order it today. It'll pre-download on my game. Down on your yeah. game, your console, <laughs> and then, yeah. And then when it comes out, it unlocks it, and I can go play it. And so it's like, damn, like it's it's a totally different thing now. It, it, I can literally download this full game, um, yeah. you know, at the house or whatever. So I'm down for it, man. Uh, like I said, I think it's gonna make me uh, kind of re revitalize because I at one time, man, I used to know the entire University of Memphis football roster mainly because I was playing with I was playing with them on the game, and I knew everybody, yeah. and I knew the entire. Uh, Conference USA. I knew, I, you know, I knew I can tell. I, I knew college football better because I was I was playing the game so much. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm down for that for sure, man. But uh, number three, um, <laughs> this is what I definitely want to make sure we talk about. Um, yeah, man, my boy Dane Danger had a little drama on Twitter. It's... I'm gonna hand this over to you, man. We we live in different times, man. The NIL and all this kind of stuff makes things different. You sign, you get a Musa Cisse commitment, uh, former Tiger who's coming in. He's a center. It's probably some, you know, is he going to – we came in thinking Dane's going to be the starter. Can't have a Tiger basketball season without some drama, though, right? So you, Always. You think, you think Always. Dane's going to be the starter. You assume Dane's going to be the starter. And then you get Musa Cisse. Rumors start coming around. He might be decommitting. Georgetown might start getting involved. How, how real was that? How much was that just Twitter nonsense? Kenny? Um, I mean, if you listen to, I mean, if you read, the, the, we live in a day and age where the speculation can used to be able to run rampant, but then Dane Danger got on Twitter himself and said, right. "Yo, this is foolishness, right? Like this is stupid." Mm -hmm. I have, and his his reasoning was wild. He said, "I have Memphis in my bio." Like I'm like, well, that's <laughs> not. Well, I, think that's, so. I think people were saying like he took it out of his bio just to be being goofy or whatever. So. On Instagram, I th they, someone said that he did. But mm -hmm. anyway, I I don't know. I mean, listen, would it surprise me in this day and age, would it surprise me if 
he signed a national letter of intent to play at Memphis. Um, saw that another big man, as the big man market in NIL stuff started to kind of deplete. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I forgot the kid's name, but this kid, this one kid got signed to, I think it was Washington maybe, and like for like $2 million a year NIL. Damn. And, and so would it surprise me if, He's like, damn, dude, I, I went too quick. I signed too quick. Mm-hmm. I should have mm-hmm. let me hold out. Let me let me go see what's up. And were schools tampering? I'm sure schools tamper all the time. I'm sure Tiger the Tiger roster, people have been tampering with this Tiger roster since they started committing to the University of Memphis. Um, do I suspect that Dane Danger will be on this team next year? Absolutely. Um, would it surprise me if he wasn't? No, because it's college basketball mm-hmm. and Nothing is certain until, uh, and nothing is certain until you get a guy on the on uh, you know in your city. Well, not even that, dude. Emmanuel Acott a few years ago yep, was yep, working yep. out at the university, working out at the university, working out with uh, the trainer, the working out, and the, not even with a team. He wasn't with the team at that point, mm-hmm. but he was working out in the university at the Lori Walton facility. And next thing you know, he's in Western Kentucky playing ball. So it's like you just never know, man. But I mean, obviously he came out and said, no, this is, this is not legit. Um, and then it, and then it came out that the person there, there was rumors from Georgetown people and then Twitter handles from Memphis that cover that not even cover that just talk about the university of Memphis basketball program. They went with it as a breaking news story and it sent a shockwave through the fan base. And so, um, you know, that person, that person did what he did and acknowledged that he was trolling um, teach their own, man. Teach their own, I guess. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it wouldn't be a Tiger basketball season without some drama. We touched on this uh, Wednesday show, but it was still a developing development. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, it had laugh. just started when we were recording. Yeah, it was it really just... happening while we were recording. Yeah, right. So, so. Um, yeah. So, I, I think it'll be fine, man. Uh, he'll be there. Um, and like we said, this is pending, man. There'll be lineups when either one of those guys start in. Nick Jordan is starting to send. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna Kobe Rogers is gonna be the four, right? Yeah, like but, you but just like, never know. Um, being real, man, like it's probably gonna play out where both of those guys are gonna be starting. But you'll you'll probably have a you'll probably see lineups with Musa and Dane out there at the same time. It's a matchup based thing, right? Like yeah. a lot of times it's a matchup based thing, or it's a mm-hmm. what side of the bed did Penny Hardaway wake up on? Like what's he right. feeling that day? You know, you just never right. know with him, and that's. It is what it is, man. Like, yeah. you know, I, I losing a big would be a big deal. Please don't go after PJ Haggerty. That's all I gotta say. Don't let's not tamper with him. Let's keep him on the campus. Yeah, man. Leave, leave that dude alone, man. It's, now um, I'm not putting it out there that he's being tampered with. I'm just saying, yeah. uh, you know, there's there's other players that I'd be more concerned about. But it is what it is, man. Like tampering happens you know it, it, it goes down we we make jokes all the time about penny hardaway recruiting and handshake lines right like that mm-hmm. would be considered tampering if you will but but that's that's the kind of a joke that we make mm-hmm. so anyway man, it's all good i'm, I'm uh i hate to talk about something off the cuff because i'm i might be wrong and man have nothing to do with nothing but that's fine too uh <laughs> uh tiger basketball the lady side they got a commitment from a transfer portal young lady who came from jackson state right Right, four star. Yep. Yeah, because didn't uh, Coach uh, what's what's her name? Alex Simmons. Didn't Coach Simmons come from the SWAT? Where did she come from? She came from. Uh, oh my gosh, dude! I hold on, let me look. <laughs> what I'm saying is, let me find out. You you had a little layup line with I me. Mean, that layup line. You had a little handshake line in you too, Coach. Let me find out. I don't think it was the SWAT that she was at. I think let it me, was. When she like it? She was at um, Garner Webb, which is. Yeah, hold on. No. Big South Conference. Okay. Big South talking. Conference. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But yeah. Alex Simmons is <laughs> Alex Simmons. I man, it, it is clear to me, man. Like this FedEx money is 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 oh. doing some work for everybody. Yeah. And Alex Simmons is already the beneficiary of it with this recruit, man. I, yeah. I think I think she's gonna be a rock star here, bro. I really mm-hmm. do. So yeah, for sure, for sure, man. But I tell you what, man, about to take a break, man. When we come back, it's gonna be more than anything the same. So we'll see you guys in a minute. When I saw that Michael Cole put out a story of Adam Silver continuing his check-ins with Ah, John, I'm like, what the hell are we doing? 
Draymond Green is still kicking dudes in the nards and throwing spin and back fists in the middle of games. And for some reason, Ja Morant still needs a check-in. He's, he's yet to hurt anybody. He's taking the right steps. Shut the, shut the hell up, dude. Like, what are we doing? It is such posturing. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, and it's gross. It was steep, and he was trying to make an example of him, and we yeah. didn't think he'd be able to stick to that. Lo and behold, by damn, he hasn't. Miles Bridges in the league. Draymond had an indefinite suspension away from... I don't even think it was actual suspension. Sorry, you do exactly what button to push because I saw an article come out and I was like, what a cuck. It's unbelievable. Adam Silver, the cuck. Come hang out with Daniel Greer and Nathan Qualls on Grizz901 Live. Every Tuesday night at 901, live on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Uh, I wonder if Luke is going to survive because he is, he, he just, uh, he, he fell to the floor the other night when he got up and reminded me of myself getting up off the floor these days. <laughs> I was like, my God, he looks like he's 50 years old trying to get up off the floor. I think Luke is embellishing a little bit because he might be beat up and everything, but I think he's embellishing a little bit to just, he's, he's, he's pulling the old bait and switch on people. A little bit. I told that. my brothers the other day on text, I'm almost getting tired of watching them bitching mulling the whole game. Oh my Jesus God. Christ. It's over. It's literally over everything. And it's not just over, was it a call, not a call? Is it my, my teammate didn't move? Or if I threw a pass, you weren't there? I'm just, the whole, all of the antics are getting old. For somebody who is such a great basketball player, the whining has gotten absolutely they control them. It's every single every possession. Tune in to the Night Court Podcast with your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brevin Knight on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. As promised, man, I told you I was, I was going to get the man of the hour in on the show today. My man, Evan Damarell, man, he's with Euclid. He's also the host of Locked On Cavs, covering Cleveland Cavaliers uh, basketball, man. Bro, you just messing shit up out here in Memphis, man. You got us going crazy. I was, take, I was taking me a good power nap today, man. I woke up, my phone buzzing, man. All because of you, man. You, you're the man here in Memphis. Everyone is talking about your information that you put out today. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't see it. We didn't get it firsthand for you. We got it from the NBA Central account. And uh, basically it says this. The Memphis Grizzlies are a dark horse candidate for Donovan Mitchell in the event that Cleveland decides to trade him per you. Uh, the same so You were quoted as saying these same sources have confirmed that the reporting that the Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, the Miami Heat are interested in inquiring Mitchell if he becomes available. But a separate source did share that the Houston Rockets and Memphis Grizzlies could also be teams worth monitoring in a possible Mitchell sweepstakes. To which we went crazy. We started doing math. We did quick math in our head. We went to the NBA trading machine. And he gas, gas even. Mm -hmm. Desmond Bain is the only number that really makes sense, right? Uh, he's our starting yes. shooting guard um, for the Memphis Grizzlies. Just signed a big, big contract here with the Grizzlies. Um Make some sense of what you're hearing. Uh, break break it down a little bit more if you can, Evan, the news that you're hearing that the Grizzlies are involved in these potential trade talks for Donovan Mitchell if he, if he, if he becomes available. So I think it's – when it comes to Memphis, injuries just completely cratered their season. It's mm -hmm. why they have the ninth overall pick. They were right. one of the top teams in the West, not this season, but the season before. Mm -hmm. So obviously – they are in that weird spot where they are young. They are growing. They do have a lot of guys on their payroll, but they are mindful of the fact that like John Morant is an ascending superstar. They mm -hmm. do have a really strong foundation. And, you know, I think like Cleveland did maybe a, two seasons ago, they are going to be, you know, pragmatic and open to any opportunities if a star level player just becomes available. And mm -hmm. I think looking at this off season, there's not going to be a ton of like marquee for agents that teams will be fighting or tripping themselves over unless, you know, LeBron declines his player option to really throw things into chaos. But I think with like Donovan Mitchell, I think it's just a situation that a lot of teams have tabs on, but I think Memphis just kind of feels a little bit better with their situation asset wise, because they do have, 
You had mentioned Desmond Bailey. That's a contract that one slots nicely. And also he's a very attractive trade piece if the Grizzlies mm-hmm. really explore that route, but they do have the ninth overall pick in the draft too, which right. they could take a rookie. I mean, that's, that's fine. If that's their prerogative, if they want to, you know, maybe they draft like a senior or a junior player, like in college at that level. And they, mm-hmm. uh, kind of get like more of an impact player on the cheap just because they have to be mindful of their financials, but they also could use that as an asset to grease a trade that could result in Donovan Mitchell coming to Cleveland. And from Cleveland's side of things, I'm not saying like the Cavs are actively looking to shop him right now. I think I made Mm -hmm. that clear in the story. It's just if Mitchell tells them and he's made it, he made it explicitly clear at the start of this season that he wouldn't entertain an extension until this off season. Well, Mm -hmm. the off season's here. I think the conversations will start to heat up, not in the next few hours or maybe even days, but I think in the coming maybe weeks or so, or as we creep closer to the start of free agency, I think that Mm -hmm. conversation will really hit ahead. And if he tells the Cavs, Hey, um, and by the way, he always just makes it clear, like he's going to evaluate a situation and do what's best for him and for winning, like for him, because he's not content with individual accolades, like all-star appearances and that result in a second round exit, or he finishes like fourth or fifth in MVP Mm -hmm. voting or something like that. Um, Instead, I think he is kind of focused on just building a legacy, winning championships, being, you know, in the same breath of guys that have um, just done it all and kind of like are considered some of the all-time greats. And I think he is obsessed with that. I think that's just pretty clear how you watch him play and especially with how he dragged the Mm -hmm. Cavs at points in the playoffs this year. But if if he does say no, I think, yeah, the the teams that have been linked to him for a while, I think it is Miami, it is the Lakers. That's what I've heard. It's been reported. Um, I think the Nets will be always an option too, just because the Nets are always a team I think that want to remain competitive in the one their own local market and also on the national level, just because they have to compete with the Knicks and the NBA at the same time. Yeah. But the Grizzlies are just like one of those teams along with the Rockets where they have a lot of nice assets, whether it's picks or young players, and if they want to maybe consolidate some of it, unfortunately, just to kind of maybe hit the accelerator a little bit to push them closer to like an actual championship level organization, which I believe if you look at Memphis, they are on the precipice of it. Maybe they do make this quote unquote win now move and yeah. Mitchell arrives to Memphis. It's stable coaching, a stable organization, clear like stars in their places. He can either be the guy for this team that pushes them over the edge or also finally gets the sustainable success that he's looking for. And I, I think Memphis just makes a little bit of sense as a fit, mm-hmm. um, especially mm-hmm. with Jai. Like, I think that'd just be like one of the more lethal backcourts in the NBA if you paired those two together. Yeah. Um, it's just, it seems like you're pretty wait and see. Like, you're not saying that this is something that's – you're definitely not saying this is something that's imminent, and, but it's oh, something no. that you definitely um, – we talked about this at the beginning of the show, that, like, all these GMs are in the same room. Uh, you know, for the combine and all those type of things. So, of course, these conversations are very easy to have. Um, but with that being said, something I said in the beginning of the show as well is that whenever there's rumors about a, a player of this level being available, you have to jump into those conversations, whether you have real, legit interest in that player or not, just because there's so many other things that can pop off. You you kind of get – you want to get into that that yeah. small group chat. You want to get into that, that network of conversation, you know what I mean, just in case other things may be available or you may be needed for – a uh, 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 as a third team or or maybe another player you may be eyeing on their roster yep. as well. I'll name a couple of guys as far as that's concerned that the Greasers may be interested in because of one of our major needs right now, which is a big man, someone who can get rebounds, set screens, things like that. Uh, there was rumors out that Jared Allen is uh, – a lot of guys are kind of upset with him uh, because of how he handled his injury situation. Do you think Jared Allen is a, is a guy that could be on the move especially for a team like the Grizzlies to take a look at who need that uh, that big man, especially someone who could be a starter like Jared Allen. Yeah, I mean, Jared Allen is, I would say, of Cleveland's star players, one of the more malleable guys that's easier to plug and play just because mm-hmm. he very much understands his role. Uh, he's a pick-and-roll big man. He has very low usage. He will. He's a pretty consistent lob threat. When he's healthy, he had a few – to start the season like a weird foot slash ankle injury that kind of sidelined him all through training camp in the preseason and i think he missed just one game before he came back for the season opener or the home opener rather but yeah the rib injury is just a weird situation i there's a lot of noise in the reporting i do know that he did have a pierced rib i think it was a pretty hefty bruise and i think it was just mm-hmm. a case of sure maybe some players or front office members are venting their frustration because they could use him out there but it is a pain thing um jb vickerstaff did make it clear like one that the team will never like make a player jeopardize their health or well be mm-hmm. for a game playoff or not but like if they're able to play they're able to play and like allen it's been reported that like he has trouble lifting his arms he's in excruciating pain 
Um, and I believe that just because he's a seven foot big man who weighs 260 plus pounds. If you, right. if you're boxing out, you're going to get hit in the ribs, right? Again, no amount of padding or yeah. anything's really going to protect that. And if you could aggravate it, make it worse, that could result in surgery or something that's, you know, I would say career altering or just, you know, could do some damage. But in terms of Memphis, like I said, he is a plug and play big man. Um, I think he'd pair really nicely to triple J just because triple J can, um, stretch the floor a little bit too. And they share the floor together. Also, I think. It gives an interesting parallel to Cleveland where that's like a bit of a plug and play option where you could always have one of them on mm-hmm. the floor. It also doesn't force Triple J to maybe pick up more fouls than he needs to. It also, can, yeah, it also yeah. just keeps him out of foul trouble as well because you have that extra big body who can absorb that contact down low. And also having Allen is um, a bit of a safety blanket on defense too. He, of course, gives you the rebounding. I think he gives you that physical edge inside that's really imposing. But also mm-hmm. I think it would empower Jaron Jackson Jr. if, like, let's say Allen ended up in – Memphis in a hypothetical trade um, to do a little bit more of like a Swiss art, like just more of the versatility stuff that he does defensively because he is a multifaceted defender. And I think would unlock him quite a bit. And that's, that's a similar parallel to Cleveland. I think there's obviously levels to it and layers to it, but you can see it if you just look at the grand scope of it, but yeah, mm-hmm. Allen would be a fun fit um, with a lot of teams. Like I said, he's a plug and play option. I, I think Memphis makes a lot of sense. I think the Pelicans are always going to be a team that are calling in on him. And to your point, like it's not, um, an instant trade it's not like nba 2k i think is an example one executive gave me where like you just select two players hit start and you get a bunch of trades generated these are Mm -hmm. conversations that happen continually so if like a team like memphis let's say they are keep like they are keeping tabs on donovan mitchell let's say they are keeping tabs on jared allen too like they can kind of just you know approach the table have a conversation with cleveland the cleveland could say no dice we're not really entertaining a trade right now and those conversations can shift and change over time. Yeah. It's how the Cavs got Jerry down in the first place is they kind yeah. of just kept checking in with Brooklyn to see if he was available. And then the James Harden trade happened and they jumped the, in. Yeah. The Rockets didn't want Harden at the time and, or excuse me, not Harden, but they obviously didn't want Harden at the time. They didn't want Allen at the time and the Cavs jumped in as the third team to get it. So like you said, like there's a lot of moving and shaking here. And I think mm-hmm. this stuff manifests, it comes and goes, it's hot or cold, but I think it's going to be an interesting off season for Cleveland just because it does hinge on whether or not Jared Allen commits and like a yeah. team like Memphis could benefit from that. If, yeah. um, like you said, if they're a third team, maybe they get some pieces from another team or it's just a directly one-to-one trade with Cleveland yeah. itself. Like there's some moves you can make between both sides just to really connect the dots and the threads here. You talked about Cleveland having to, you know, make some decisions with their season ending, um, losing to the Boston Celtics. Um, Coach JB Bickerstaff, something something that's very unfair sometimes about the NBA is that coaches often casualties even before it's actually time for them to be a casualty, right? And JB yeah. came through here. We had JB. Um, he was a casualty when we switched our front office over. Um, and we've seen him grow to be a better coach with Cleveland. They thought he did a great job at Cleveland this year, but it looks like if all fingers are pointing to JB Bickerstaff, it's probably going to be let go there. Um, what's your, what are your thoughts about that? And just also um, – I'm, I know you cover the team. I'm assuming you're a fan. You're connected to the team very closely as well. What's, what are your overall mood as far as the direction of Cleveland going for? So I'll answer the last question first. It's, it's mm-hmm. a little chaotic, I think, just because there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding it. I think you know right. this is the first time a star has made a decision that is this impactful since LeBron left in 2018. So mm-hmm. if Donovan Mitchell says, hey, uh, this isn't for me, I think, yeah, you look at those trades then, or if he commits, it's going to get a little bit more chaotic because the Cavs uh, are asset dry. Like they gave up quite a bit to get Donovan Mitchell. They can trade on the night of the 2024 NBA draft. They could technically trade the rookie they trade pick in a trade then because it doesn't qualify for the step in role. But after that, they don't really have a draft pick that's no strings attached movable in the first round until 2031. So that would be seven years from now at this point. So <laughs> yeah. Um, the, yeah, the Donovan Mitchell extension we can be completely out of the window at that point, and the Cavs could be looking at a completely different team by then. But I think it's going to be interesting. I have told folks, like, hey, it's don't live and die by everything because you're going to burn yourself out so quickly. And I think that's just, you know, sound advice for anyone. Like, you just kind of have to trust the process and let things play out like they do. And I fandom short fans, short for fanatics. So I understand that people are very more mm-hmm. emotionally invested in this. I think covering this team is kind of, let me put my fandom glasses to the side a little bit too. And let me just kind of look at it from more of like a analytical and just coverage standpoint. But in terms of JB, um, I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great coach. Um, I think he's a great person in the community. He's a, mm-hmm. 
very outspoken as a black man and speaking up yeah. for black people in the greater Cleveland community and just being yeah, yeah. an advocate for them, which, you know, people don't have that voice. And I think that's huge just from that aspect alone. And I think mm-hmm. he's just involved in a lot of different ways too. But um, I all, like, I think he's a good guy. I think he's a great coach. I think he's done a lot with this team and grown quite a bit. He got handled, handed the team in a pretty untenable and unwinnable yeah. situation after John Bayline, who, uh, resigned from the team after just not being able to handle losing and also I think just losing the team overall and JV was handed that mess coached them through COVID and a lot of just mm. pretty tough years I think really helped turn them around and build that fan identity I think yeah, obviously having Evan Mobley being a defensive phenom as a rookie helps quite a bit too but mm. you're seeing a lot of growth and progression but I think it is fair to question that how much longer can you wait for him to grow as a coach or is his limitations and flaws that have always kind of, you know, come up at the worst times that are just stops, whether it's Memphis, Houston, now Cleveland, um, is he sometimes does lean on vets, sometimes tightens up his rotations a little bit much. The offense really isn't there and it can be kind of, um, uninspiring, but like, if this is his last season, it is impressive how he was able to squeeze so much out of such a banged up roster. I think when Mobley and Garland went down, this team was at a crossroad and he didn't lose the pulse or the focus of the locker room. They played with a lot of pace and space. They had the, they had the best 22 game stretch to start the new year, which is incredible to think about still, but um, it's still just some of the issues and I've been given the understanding and it's been widely reported that I think there's going to be a lot of just evaluation over the coming days. I think, yeah, in terms of change coming to Cleveland, I think Bickerstaff and what happens next with him could be the first change. So whether they clean house entirely and get rid of him and his entire staff, or maybe they speak with him and say like, Hey, we should bring on someone in the similar vein, like a Kenny Atkinson who can be like your associate head coach, but is more comfortable scheming up the offense. And I would say like, maybe it puts pressure on Bickerstaff to coach harder because it's a guy who could replace him if things go sideways, but yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. But, the problem is, I know what was reported this too, is like the, the assistant or the market right now for coaches and like super robust. I think the Lakers are kind of seeing some of the struggles of that now. But um, I just think it is fair to question like how much further can he take this Cavs team where they currently exist just because they are no longer young. They're no longer growing. Like I think it is time to finally take the trading wheels off this team and start pushing them towards like a legitimate playoff threat. And sure. They gutted it out in the seven games against Orlando. When it got to game seven, I really thought that Cleveland would be packing their bags early, and I'd be Mm. having these conversations with you or anybody else who hits me up um, a couple weeks ago. And they took it to five against Boston. Unfortunately, had three guys missing in the final game, two key pieces in uh, Mitchell and Allen missing in game four. And you have to commend and tip your cap to that, but there are some flaws and head-scratching losses that happened this season that certainly – put it in perspective but yeah again you evaluate the whole five and a half years he's been a head coach here um and then you move forward from there and we'll see what the Cavs do um i think it's going to be an interesting time but i wrote this in my piece and i kind of maintained this stance no one knows what donovan mitchell's going to do until donovan mitchell tells the Cavs what they're right. going to do because he's the only one who knows what he wants to do and once he kind of gives them either the green light to say hey i'm not sticking around or hey i'll you know sign uh the four-year extension We'll start seeing the dominoes. I wouldn't say fall in rapid succession, but fall a little bit more quickly for Cleveland. Yeah. We're kind of out of this weird holding pattern that they're in right now. Yeah, for sure. Well, Evan, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's my man, Evan Demarell, man. He came in. He got all y'all going crazy out here, man. I had to get him on here for sure, man. I, we, oh, we connected today. We made this happen, man. You look like you had a busy day, bro. Look like everybody's been blowing you up. Plus, I yeah. know you had to do your show today as well. You had to do a couple shows today, I believe. Yeah, yeah, including my son, my own. So yeah, well, Evan, I appreciate you coming on, man. Any any final shout outs? Anything? So how can we catch your stuff? We we, we definitely know your Twitter by now. So uh, yeah, no, it's funny you mentioned phone buzzing. I shared the story once this morning. It didn't get much traction, and then I shared a little bit of a snippet about the Timberwolves kind of monitoring Darius Garland situation because they've been mm-hmm. a fan of his for a while, and that's when I started getting a lot of texts and notifications. And then I think I saw NBA Central shared it too and i'm like oh yeah it was gone yeah cool (laughs) and then uh talk about a couple other people we we have some colleagues as well who reached out in the memphis area who just touched base with me but yeah if you uh like the sound of my voice i do locked on Cavs five days a week um i also all my written work is at right down euclid we're a independent news organization where we uh, just try to provide on the ground cleveland sports coverage we're credentialed and affiliated with all the major teams and we try to focus on 
not just, you know, the X's and O's and the box scores and everything else, which of course we provide that coverage, but also just like their direct impact in the community and how yeah. these guys are involved and actually part of things and just, yeah, you know, man. just involved. So yeah. If hey, you want power to, to the indies, man, for sure. I'm, I'm with all of you, man. Pretty much, pretty much. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. But yeah, no, thank you for having me. And I'm glad I, we could chat and hopefully, you know, things aren't going as crazy in Memphis uh, in the next few days. Just breathe, breathe guys. It, it's, it'll figure itself out. You just got to trust oh, yeah. the process. And plus, for you know, sure. The Grizzlies are in a good spot as soon as they're healthy again, no matter what. Yeah, for sure. Well, again, that's my man, Evan Damarell, man. I appreciate you coming out today, man. I'll tell you what, about to take a break, y'all. When we come back, it's Inside the Same Brain, brought to you by Creative Sig. We'll see you guys in a minute. The Grizzlies, uh, number nine. Number nine in the NBA draft. They're picking ninth, 39th, and 57. Who are they getting with those three? Go. Uh, uh, a veteran from around the league. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, if, if, if there is, if there's something that they could do with that ninth pick that gets them someone that's already proven, then yeah, because I don't even know who you, who would be thought of as being the ninth best player uh, that's coming out at this point. I have no idea who that person would be, but I know this team, in terms of for moving forward, forward, you think of, in terms of winning a championship, still young enough, and you still want some pieces uh, that are able to help you win right now, not just continue to amass for the future. We only, for the future is right now for this team. Tune in to the Night Court Podcast with your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brevin Knight, on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. At Create-A-Sig, our top priority is to provide the best customer service experience as possible while offering the largest variety of vape supplies, legal THC products, and smoking accessories. Our trained sales associates are here to assist any and all customers to help them find the best products available. With our daily deals, weekend deals, loyalty rewards program, and our punch card program, there are tons of rewards to earn to help our customers save plenty of money along the way. Check out one of Creatasig's four locations across the greater Memphis area and come visit us. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show, man. Shout out to my man Chip Williams today. Good stuff he was talking about, man. Me and Chip are really on this same wavelength, man. If if I can get, if I can get one of my guys that I want, one of my my perimeter players, whether it be Dalton Connect, whether it be Stephon Castle, whether it be Ron Holland, and then mess around and get back in the draft and get uh, get my boy Edie too. That's a win for me. That's, that's, a, that's win a one draft. all day long. That's the one man. draft for me, man. If you could pull out something like that and then what shot it again. Go ahead. What is it about? Well, I know we need to get past this, but. Mm -hmm. You've said you've you've done a bunch of research on him and all this kind of stuff, but yeah. what is it about Edie? Because really. both you and Chip have now, changed Chip. your minds completely on him. Um, I see a guy, man. If you like Stephen Adams, you'll love Zach Edie. Okay, except he's about four inches tall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, well, no, probably five or six because Stephen yeah. Adams is like six foot eleven, and he basically does everything Stephen Adams can do. Plus, he can make free throws. He's gonna have the same issues that Stephen Adams had. Like is you know, uh, he'll get caught up in and in, in switching all those type of things. So they'll strictly have to put him in drop coverage and not switch off of him. But um, yeah, that whole thing, and just kind of sometimes you got to bet on dudes who've been who just Dominant. have to, that chip, been, no bet, bet on those dudes who just got that permanent chip on their shoulder. You yeah. know what I mean? Guys like John Morant who always feel like they're getting slighted or like those type of dudes man who are always petty like he seems like a super petty dude like he just remembers y'all said i wasn't gonna do this y'all you know y'all slip on me like, and it's also of, it's also interesting to me that he in the combine measured faster quicker yeah. laterally moved better has a, a no ben injury Klingen. has no injury history yeah. un unlike donovan Klingen. donovan right? Klingen, man hey I, i'm hey the more you talk man the more i'm down for it. <laughs> i mean <laughs> But yeah, uh, also shout out to my man uh, Evan Demarell for sure. 
uh dropping some real stuff. My boy looked like he was down bad though, man. Yeah. man looked like, <laughs> he looked tired. He was like, yeah, he looked like he was down bad, man, with all this talk talking about breaking his team up, man, for real. But uh he was he was dropping some good stuff, man. Like I said, I think the Grizzlies are gonna be super active this offseason, just trying to you know get this roster ready to stay on pace with the Minnesota Timberwolves, Oklahoma City Thunder, Dallas Mavericks, etc. Uh, but it's time for Inside the Same Brain, man, where we talk about three things going on. No, no that's not what we're doing. We're no, talking about what's what going, going on in my brain, man. Hey, I, I took a little puff from uh, a little Creative Sig <laughs> <laughs> before we did this, man, so I'm a little thrown off. But shout out to my people at Creative Sig, man, who sponsored this segment of the show. Four area locations here in the city of Memphis. You can go get the Salem Salem Pack, man. Big things going on at uh, Creative Sig. Like I said, my man Chris is uh, the district manager there. Great, great crew. You, they'll come in and take care of you every time you come in. Get a Santa Asylum pack, man. Whether you're a Delta 8 user or a nicotine user, they got what you need, man. The nicotine pack comes with any wave bar, uh, any uh, Ursa hand kit, any 60 milliliter theory, or a salt nick juice pack. You can get all those things inside the Santa Asylum nicotine pack. The Delta 8 pack, that's the one that I grab all the time, man. It's, you can get uh, any torch, um, um, any torch disposable. Uh, I'm sorry, any disposable, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yep. pre-roll and also a pack of uh, edibles, man, the gummies. It's going down. The same asylum pack, get it. Whether you're a nicotine user, whether you're a Delta Aid user, go pick it up, man. And if you're new to the whole marijuana experience with the Delta 8, they will take you by the hand. They won't make you feel embarrassed. They'll let you know that this is a lot more mainstream than you may think. Um, they can kind of, You can kind of tell them what you got going on, whether you got headaches or can't sleep or uh, uh, can't stay up or whatever you got going on, man. Eating Anxiety, like, uh, anything, man. Right. Uh, you, you need to get an appetite, lose your appetite. They can they can get you the stuff you need over there at Creative City to get you right, man. There's a lot of medicinal value and and, uh, and purposes for uh, Delta A products. Get with them and they'll get take care of you. This is not the stuff you see in Mapco. This is some good quality stuff that you get at Creative City, but check them out. Um, saw a story today, man, video today that made me feel like I needed to uh to hit it a little bit harder at uh at Creative City. <laughs> yeah. Not hit it a little bit harder. Anyway, Kel Mitchell, Kenny Stubberfield was on Club Shay Shay. Uh Kel Mitchell, of course, is from Kenan and Kel. He's a, and he looks exactly how he looked when he was on Kenan and Kel. Uh of course, also from Good Burger as well. Um, told a story about oh, he was he was married and his wife uh had a child that uh miscarried, I believe. I think it was a miscarriage and found out that the baby uh, was not his. And they said he said this happened multiple times with multiple guys, and he found that his wife was pregnant by other dudes. And uh, Shannon Sharp's reaction, Kenny Stubblefield, was the exact same one as mine, uh, of disbelief <laughs> to see that, the, that he was like, oh, okay, oh, okay. You know, that's what, that's what uh, Shannon was on, right, when he heard the story. And I immediately went into my mind of, man, there's no way in the world if I'm married to a lady and she has a baby outside of me, then I'm gonna take her back, let alone multiple times, right? But then you hear so many stories on the opposite side where women do take guys back who've had kids outside of marriage and get caught cheating on those type of things. And I'm like, man, I hear all that, but screw all that too, man, because that's a double standard that I'm just gonna have to stand on. And, and I'm gonna make this short and sweet, man. Um, I got some more stuff from Creative Sig I need to get back to, man. I don't know how much I don't know how much focus I got, man. Because I took a little preview of it. I don't know how much, much focus I got left. But I'm gonna throw it to you, Kenny. Both you, both of you, both of us have been married before. We got married around about the same time, had our kids about about the same time. Right. Could you, if you found out that your wife had a baby by another man or was pregnant by another man, could you stay there, bro? Hmm. No. Nah, <laughs> like a quick answer. Hell nah. to the F no. Nah. Nah, bro. Like, I uh, that would be a deal breaker for me, man. Yeah, but as a man, if 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 you messed up on Tracy, right, or if I messed up on my wife or whatever, I would expect to, man, get throw your boss a grace, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for me, bro, it just don't go that way. Like, and I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'm hey, hey, I know that's extremely selfish. I know that's a real double standard. I do not care, man. Like, I'm not. I would not do that, bro. Like, there's no. I'm not doing it. Nah. Yeah, I don't know if I put the standard at, at like, hey, get throw your boy some grace. Yeah, I, I would, I would hope. Put a Bible would. on her. Yeah, I would hope. I, I would. Don't listen to yourself. Listen yeah. to the voice of God. I want to hear the voice of God right now. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> but no, I, listen to God and me right now. <laughs> 
I don't want to Jesus juke the situation, but like, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I feel like the idea of stepping out and especially producing a child out of that stepping out situation mm. is wild to me, man. Yeah, like, man. Could wild. Put a condom on, bro. Like, bro. <laughs> Wild. Cheat, cheat with a condom. Like, it's a, come on, man. Don't, don't trust the pull-out game with a, with a, with a third party. Man. Come on, man. It's a dangerous just, game you play it, bro. Yeah, man. That's a dangerous game. But, yeah, yeah, man, it would be tough. Just I, I don't I don't see how my mind and – and I obviously I haven't gone through a situation like yeah. that. But in my mind, I don't see how I could – how I could come back from that and, and salvage that relationship. But maybe by God's grace, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe oh, no, I could. God, I don't know. I don't. God, I don't. Grace, God, I don't want to assume. I don't want to assume anything. But I know. Just in this moment, as you're asking me that question, hell no. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't. I don't. I don't know what time you gonna edit this show, but I don't know if Tracy gonna hear it in the background. <laughs> <laughs> She's asleep already, oh, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna throw this out to you. We are gonna wrap this up, man. I, I saw a guy because I saw this kind of going crazy on Facebook, right? And the guy was like, man. I'm telling you, if you cheat on somebody and they take you back, the cheater is never going to respect you. They're going to think you weak for taking them back. They're going to take advantage of you again. What do you think about this? Um, I don't the, think the cheater I will think, always disrespect yeah, you. I don't think that's. I think they are blame shifting and shifting the blame to the victim of of the situation. And yeah. I I am not down with that at all. Yeah. If you're a cheater, I don't give a I don't give a f if you. If, if that person takes you back or not, like mm -hmm. if you're a cheater, you're going to cheat. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's what no, they saying. Like they, they saying, like you, if, if you get caught cheating, you might as well cut that person off. Cause if they, if, if you take them back, they just going to think you ain't shit. No way. So, they, so like, you know. what's the, so what's the alternative? Like what? So the, the whole idea is I cheated on you. I respect you. I cheated on you, but now you're taking me back. So now I don't respect you. you Mother effort. You didn't, you didn't respect her before yeah, the first time. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you didn't respect her before. Like, don't don't shift blame and act like it's mm -hmm. something that 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 other person has done to right. cause you. Now you've caused me to do this. Now, nah, bro, you're just a you're just a bad dude. Like you're just a bad oh, yeah, dude. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know Real what I'm shit. saying. Like, mm -hmm. like you're just a bad dude. Like the worst kind of that that is an abusive gaslighting situation to blame shift onto a, onto somebody who has yeah. nothing to do with you stepping out on them. Nothing mm -hmm. to do with it. Well, I tell you what, man. To all my guys out there, man, if, if you come home and and and, and, you, and your girl's pregnant and that baby come out and don't look quite like you, man, just go visit our friends at Creative City. Looks like man. me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, go, I'm go to Creative City, man. Go to Creative City. Four area locations <laughs> and get right, man. Ask for the Saint Saddle Pack, man. Get your mind right, man. Get and then you know. Put that ass out for sure. <laughs> don't go out like my boy Kale Mitchell, man. Don't do it. Don't do not do it. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but um, uh, but yeah, man. It's been a good one. Like I said, shout out to our two guests today. It's 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 postseason time, man. It's draft time, man. We have plenty to talk about going forward for the next few weeks, man. For Kenny Stubblefield on the other side of the World Wide Web, for our guests, this is your boy Anthony Sane. We'll see you guys next time, and we are out. Thank you for listening to the Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.